Hello, I think I've just gone live. Um, you'll get this 20 seconds after I say it, and I will get your chat about a minute after you've typed it. So um, it's a little bit hit and miss, which is why I've got in the background. So far, Mark the Gentleman Woodturner. Howdy, everyone. And we may have another guest turning up uh, after he's got his child to go to sleep. Got uh, a couple of minutes before we start. I can see that Tommy was the first in. And I just want to try something that I've just found out about tonight. I should put Tommy down off, up on the screen. Boys and their toys. Yeah. So I'm learning StreamYard as we go. So hi, Tommy. Hi, Mike. Hi, Chris. Uh... Who else is in? Doug Miller, Jennifer Strawton. Oh, hi, Jennifer. Hi, Doug. John, John Mooney, Leona, Mike Yu from Ilminster, Rob CP, Wayne the Woodturner. Uh, who else? There's a couple of others, I believe. Who in? John. Hello, everybody. Anyway, I'm um, going to start in a couple of minutes. Chris Charlton. Um, and tonight, I'm not even going to turn the lathe on. Steady on. <laughs> break into a sweat. In fact, there's a particular reason why the lathe shouldn't be turned on for this particular job. John S. just come in. He's not on my screen yet. Oh, yes, he is. Just come up. Circular Wood by Keith. Brian at Hartwood turning. See, no matter where you stand, Pete, you can't. You can't hide that bowl behind you. No. I'm starting here. <laughs> we can still see it in the reflection in the window. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit big tide. Yeah, just a bit. Well, the bowl is what we're going to be starting with because I'm just going to do an intro for my next video. So this is a trailer. And it is kind of about time, so we'll start the trailer. My bowl. Made mostly to test my lathe, to see what my lathe was capable of and what it wasn't capable of. And it turns out it's not capable of making a bowl quite that big. Um, I couldn't cut it because I don't have anything big enough to cut, so I used a sledgehammer and wedges and split the trunk down. Um, so you can imagine the back of that was all over the place. I had to cut it down a little bit smaller because I couldn't physically lift it at the size it originally started. So I trimmed the ends off and trimmed bits off and lifted it up, got it onto the lathe, and then find I had a gnat's whisker to work with on the extension bed and tool rest. So I couldn't turn it like that. Um, however, I could very slowly just eat away the back of it until I got it down to a size that could turn properly. Um, and then I found out the limitation. Where's my camera? It's over there. This is uh, the extension to the tool rest, which needs to go on when you're turning on the, the lowest setting for the bed extension. Switch camera a sec. As you can see, that's quite uh, quite a big extension. So when you start to get towards the edge of the bowl and you're out there, this moves about all over the place, which left me with a, a very wobbly edge, one that I wasn't happy with. So 
credit thick. It's um, it's about 35 mil was what I was aiming at. It's about 33 actually. Um, wall left on it. And I'm going to try and borrow a floor standing tool rest stand and put it back on and cut it down a bit thinner. Um, okay. Get it a bit better cut. Got a couple of others joined. Ridley X, Forking Owls. Uh, there was somebody else, Die Proud, Rob CP. They've all come in. Hi, all. 25 Welcome. watching, Pete. 25, that's good for, for me. Right, so that's, that's my bowl. There will be a video coming out on that soon as I edit it down. As, um, as you can imagine, at 60 RPM, there's hours and hours of cutting, which um, I won't make you sit through. I'll speed it up. But um, right, on to tonight. Tonight we're making an indexing disc. And that's what we're making. Um, plus the bit to go on the lathe to hold it and index it. Um, because I didn't really want you to sit there whilst I drilled 130 odd holes, I've made some films and I'll speed it up for you. So we'll start with that. Because I'm on StreamYard, I've got to try and remember what I said in the film and do the commentary again. So don't worry about lip sync, that'd be all over the place. But we'll start the first film. Right, so this is what I started with. Uh, aluminium disc bought off of eBay. The seller I was buying from uh, isn't selling anymore, but if you look in the comments down below, then you'll see um, what I searched for to find it. And I bought two of them. I've just seen about the comments now. <laughs> and I printed out these templates from a, a website that you will also find in the comments down below. And the second disc I'm going to give away tonight. Um, and also I don't want to give it to somebody who doesn't want a disc. So if you put in the comments down below, um, something to indicate you're in the contest that you want one, then next weekend I will do a quick draw, uh, just pick them out of a hat and somebody will get the second disc. Complete with the screws to make it into a an indexing system because I've got some spare ones of those too. Cool. That's the video one done, nearly. As you can see, it takes a while to drill all these holes. <laughs> um, I've gone for 72 holes around the outside and 60 around the inside. 72 because that's five degrees um, of a 360 degree circle. If you do every second hole, oops, film two. Film two. If you do every second hole, then you get 36 degrees. Uh, 36 holes rather at 10 degrees and so on and so forth. So you can subdivide it. To make it fit the lathe, I screwed to a piece of wood that was um, I mark the centre of the wood and then put a screw in it so it's nice and centred. I then sanded off any sort of burr marks from the um, drilling, which also give me a rough surface, which I paint later so you can see that um, it's handy to have a rough surface. And in a second, when I catch up with myself, what am I doing? Oh yeah, so it's screwed in the middle. I then use two of the existing holes to fix it in place further out. And I measured the collar at the back of my spindle, which is 35 mil. So I used a 35 mil force in a bit and just drilled a hole through the middle. It's probably not the best way to treat a force in a bit, but it is only aluminium, so it shouldn't do any harm. Um, and you can always sharpen it, sharpen it up again. I should speed this up even faster. Uh, 
And you use it by putting it behind your chuck, obviously with something in the chuck, preferably. Um, and use your holes to measure your degrees around. I think I'm saying here, when you do this, make sure your lathe's turned off at the wall because it's very easy to reach for that on off switch when you're trying to do something else, especially if you're using a Dremel or something. You think power are on and you turn the lathe on, which you don't want to do when you've got an index disc on there. Right, so I marked mine up. Because the middle one is 60, that's kind of the seconds in a minute, um, minutes in an hour. I've done that in groups of five. And because the outside one is divisible by 12, um, I've done that in groups of six. So all I've done is mask them up, spray it black, take the masking off, and I've got black and silver. John S is asking, how thick is the disc? It's two millimetres thick. The reason I went for aluminium, I've seen this done with plywood in the past, but they're using like five mil ply or whatever. Change the camera. Yep, they're using five mil ply. Um, or well, nine mil ply I've seen on one, and you know that's taking up your thread. Um, now, although the lathe isn't running, if you've got a heavy item in fr front of it, you don't really want it to be hanging off the end of the thread. So I chose aluminium, it's two mil thick, and it's um, as you can see, quite a nice little size. And that's my disc. Change camera. There you go. Right. Instead of putting a chuck on tonight, I'm just going to put this nut on there. Um, so you can see better. So your disc is there. Now you need to hold it. Um, now the little clamp I'm going to make for this is useful for a lot of things. Um, there's lots of applications for something that clamps to the lathe bed. Um, so basically the same technique is used on all of them. You need a few measurements. First measurement you need is the width of the groove in your lathe bed. Um, on this one, it's 45 mil, that is. You also need the width underneath and watch out for the webbings that hold it. So what I do is I measure the disc on the bottom of my Tool rest banjo, um, which is 60, and that's my measurement for that. And also, you want the width of the bed. So I'm going to switch over to the bandsaw now, um, and I can't see the screen when I'm on bandsaw, so I'm relying entirely on Mark. Oh, hang on, before we do that, we have another person in the background. You can hear me, Pete? We've got Adam joined us. Adam's in the dark. Hi, Adam. Hey, guys. I can come into the light. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Adam. Hello. Adam's new to earworming. Um, in fact, he's here to see StreamYard more than anything else. But he's joined us and he's going to assist Mark in the background. It's especially important now that I'll put you back in the background, guys. <laughs> now I'm switching camera to my bandsaw camera. When I'm on that, I can't see the screen. Okay. So, I'm using, um, <clears throat> well, it's actually two bits of nine mil ply glued together because I didn't have any 18, but 18 mil ply. The first measurement I want is the width of the ply that I'm using. So I just shove that in there. Set the fence. I want two pieces of that. Sorry about the noise, but. I want these. 
one at 45 to go into the groove, and one at slightly under 45 to become my locking tab below. Um, it could be 45, as long as it fits down through the groove, but uh, I find, take it a mil under and it's better. Okay. Um, depending on application, Depending on the application of it, um, if you want it to be absolutely rigidly straight, guaranteed straight, then it's better to go with a longer piece in the bed um, and more accurate cutting. It's not overly important for this particular jig. So Pete, now you've got your uh, hand fingers away from the blade. Um, I've got a question from Chris Charlton. Um, yep. So if I didn't win, I could make one out of plywood? Question you can make one out of plywood, yep. Um, or if you look in the comments below, you'll see that um, what I search for on eBay to find it, although my supplier isn't doing them anymore, there are quite a few suppliers on there doing it for, I think the latest price was about £8. I paid less than that. So um, I bought two for £10, so £5 each. Um, but, um, yeah, it's just if you want aluminium, they're easy to get. Uh, Terry Even from TJ Turnins joined the chat and Hi, Brent Beecroft as well. Hi, Brent. Going to knock the corners off this bottom one. That's mostly so that I can see. Which one's which? That one's slightly thinner. And then I've got this one, which I've cheated on. I've already glued this piece on because I wanted the glue to dry. And again, I didn't really want you sitting there watching glue dry. It's not the most interesting of lives. So that's Fenrika 180 Woods, mil. Fenrika Woodstuff has just joined the chat as well. Hi, Fenrika. Hi, Fenrika. And Duncan the Demon Barber. Hi, Duncan. Right, last cup. So that's my three components. That one drops into there, nearly. Needs a slight trim. It needs to be a fairly tight fit because that stops it from rocking. But um, yeah, we're going to go back to the lathe in a minute, bandsaw uh, in a minute. That one drops down through and rotates so that, that locks it in place. Cool. Now, this particular lathe bed is 17 mil. So I need to take a little bit off of this piece to allow it to clamp. Go back over here. Change. There we go. I'm literally just going to take a blade width off of that. So that needs to go on to there. It needs to be square. Let's do it against the head sock.
couple of lines just to show me where to glue. I don't know if this trick's going to work. It did when I tried it earlier. I'm using a little bit of tight bond wood glue. Quite a bit of it. Should have used less than that. So, Box Pete, I didn't see you colour in that disc that's on your lathe at the moment. You're not trying to hypnotise the crew, yeah, are you? That's on the plan. This, uh, yeah, that's the Now, when you've got an indexing disc on there, your lathe needs to be turned off at the mains. Um, spinning it with an indexing disc in, it's a bad idea. I placed an order with Yandels recently, and I noticed that their essentials range now includes CA glue. So I haven't really tested it. I've only just got it. But uh, Yandel's Essentials range. This one's a medium, but I've got a thin viscosity as well. And I'm just going to put a bead of that down the edge. Remember, I've got wood glue inside. Give it a blast with the Yandel's activator. And that should act as a clamp to hold it together whilst the glue dries, so you haven't got to sit there and watch it dry for half an hour. That's a good idea. The two glues won't react together then. Um, I've used CA and, and other glues together quite frequently, and they don't really intermix. <laughs> it's not really a problem. Cool. Um, and I don't really care if the CA sticks permanently or not, as long as it holds it long enough for me to do this bit. Right, I am going to disappear off camera for just a short, short while because I have got a camera set up for my drill press. Um, I just need to drill two holes and now I can go back to here. So Mark's going to do a dance. Sorry, I'm not going to put him on camera, <laughs> but he's going to do a dance. I don't know what I'm going to get up to, but they're going well, to I'm you for a stop, minute. I'm going to stop eating my Chinese then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to anybody in the chat, if you've got any questions for Pete, now's a good time to fire them out. Yeah. And uh, we can read them out to him while he's... He says he's gone to his drill press. We know, really, he's sitting in an armchair having a cup of tea, laughing at us. I might puff on me vape when you're not looking. Yeah, I might as well. Doesn't count if you tell people, Pete. <laughs> Damn, got that wrong again. <laughs> Mike, you retired from Ilminster, says that Yandels are doing a lot of their own range nowadays. Yeah, they seem to have quite a few. They've got quite a few tools in it as well. Um. This glue, as I said, I haven't really tested it. Sorry about that. I haven't got a bench camera either. Adam, right. uh, Ben Jamin wants to know what Chinese food did you order? <laughs> um, I've got spicy chips, sweet and sour chicken, and curry sauce. There you go. It's very good. Terry, Terry has to go and stand in the corner because he came in late. He's asked, did you make the indexing plate or buy it? I made it. <clears throat> if you want to make it in, I've got two films that run at high speed making it, showing it being made. But I did buy the aluminium disc. I didn't cast it. Tut, 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 Terry. Okay, so I've <clears throat> put a coach bolt through. Where's my camera? There's my camera. I put a coach bolt through. I've just put a dab of glue on that because it's bloody annoying when they turn. JP Woodward's in. Hi, JP. I would normally use a wing nut for something like this, but I didn't have a wing nut, so I just set a nut into a piece of wood. Just give me a handle. That literally just pops up through there. Bung a washer on because why not? Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, JP. Oh, JP. JP said, Mark, I thought I'd be, thought I'd be crying in the corner after today's football results. Hashtag, don't win trophies in second place. Lol. We're only in second place on goal difference. On the same points as Tottenham. JP is a Tottenham fan. I'm a Liverpool fan. Ah, well. I don't really follow the football. It's um, rugby's my game. Right, so that's now in there. It's a nice tight fit. So it's going to be fairly solid. If I turn the bottom round, I've now got a solid clamp. That's really effective. Now, the next thing I wanted to do, and the reason I cheated and glued this block on the end, is I was looking for something with a bit of spring in it. And I couldn't think of what to use. I considered using an elastic band on a piece of wood to hold it and give it a bit of spring. And then I thought, I could nick a ruler. I've got several of them. So I pinched one of my six inch steel rules and I put a bolt through the end. Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Put a bolt through the end, which will go into the indexing disc. And the block down here has one of these threads in it. You screw that in with an Allen key, and then your piece of wood has got a solid steel thread in it, or base metal of some sort. Um, so, where can you get those inserts then, Pete? Um, you know, it's like when you get a commission to make something and you go out and you buy a pack of bolts to go with it and they want six of them and you have to buy it in tens. I did that years ago and that's where they came from. I have no idea where I got them from. Cool. But they've been pinned to my wall for years. However, there will be two of these included with the disc for whoever gets that one. So whoever wins that draw will get two of these bolts as well. Yeah. So don't forget, so, folks, that Pete's given away one of these indexing discs. So all you need to do is comment either in the live chat or in the comments below on the video. It's after got YouTube. Below on the YouTube video so I can go through them later and pick them up. Well, comment in the YouTube video after YouTube has processed it that you'd like to be entered for the competition, please. Of course yeah. you can't do that, though, can you? Sorry, I didn't think that 24 was hours. Yeah. Okay, so you have to come back tomorrow and do that. Or and everyone has to watch really carefully, Pete, right? Because you're not drilling it for them. Um, I have drilled. Have you? Everything. This is what's being uh, given away. Look at you. Look at you. It's all drilled, 130 odd holes. I haven't put the center hole in because that will depend on what lathe it's going to go on. Um, mine's 35, but it might not be on somebody else's lathe. So I've left that one. There is a centre hole there, but it's only a four mil one. That's not going to fit many lathes. So here we are. Got the spring of my ruler. It uh, pops through the hole. And if I move that to the next hole, that's a five degree movement. If I move it two holes, that's 10 degrees. That's really clever. So three holes up to six holes. Uh, five holes doesn't really work. It doesn't divide by that. But um, one, two, three, six, 12. They all come up with decent divisions of 360. And very, very, similar system, very similar system to the one that Wayne, the wood turner, made. But I think his is made out of wood. Yeah, most of them are made of wood. Um, so the reason I chose to go for aluminium is because it's thinner with equivalent strength, um, equivalent rigidity. Um, if, if I wanted to drill holes in this, then I want my chuck on the thread as much as possible. Yeah. 
Um, so it, it depends. You can have it hanging off the last couple of threads if it's something small. When you start getting something big, then you want it. You want your indexing just to be thin. Um, if you actually look at the, I think it's Paul Howard, who sells these disks. Um, well, he sells a complete indexing system, I think. But um, he's using aluminium. Um, and that's basically, that's it. Cool. Um, let's go in a bit closer using my Zoom, Mark. <laughs> JP's just noticed the um, awesome chunk of wood that you were just talking about. The huge uh, one. Change camera. There you go. Well, that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, at the beginning, I did talk about that. That's a trailer for my next video, which is going to be out as soon as I've edited it, which is probably about... Uh, 15 or so hours of video to edit down and make it into a half an hour. So, um, yeah, it might take me a few days. Right. At the bottom of the screen, you should be seeing um, blocklayer.com, circledivider.aspx. That is also in the comments. That is a most important resource. That is where you get the templates of um, laying out the holes onto a disk. So if you're making your own, if you go to that website, um, you can tell it the size of disk you're working. You can tell it how many holes you want and how far in from the edge they're gonna be. So you can space your holes out. Um, as I said, it's in the comments, that link, but you will need to know that website. Cool. And that's the end of my life. I think. This Mark wants to do another dance. Um, I know. That's an, that's an ace, that's a ace resource, uh, that Pete. But um, really good knowledge. Any questions? I'm going to bring the guys back in because I can, I think. I can get a thing to work. Put the chopsticks down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just bring this up so you can see it again. Terry's asking, where did you get the nut on the lathe? <laughs> I think he means the one on the spindle, not the one next this to This one. Um, a few weeks ago, I did a, a, I think it was a live stream on making up glue chucks. Um, and... I bought the nuts and it was just as cheap to buy five as it was to buy a couple. So I bought five, which means I've got some spares. Um, again, eBay. Um, okay. I've stuck a washer on the back of this because there is a shoulder on this lathe. Um, and when you're making a glue chuck for this lathe, you need to allow for that shoulder and set it in just that little bit further into the wood. Um, in fact, if I remember where I put it, that's one I made, just a nut in the back, um, just a friction disc basically. Um, but yeah, so I bought the nuts from eBay. I think they're about eight pounds each, Pete, aren't they? Something like that. Um, yeah, look. but if you're buying five, it gets cheaper. <laughs> um, they're not cheap, but um, if you have a um, heavy, heavy plant type servicing <laughs> place nearby, mm -hmm. go and have a word with them. Uh, I think Di was on when I was doing that live, said that you could get them dirt cheap in Sheffield. Ben Benjamin um, says. Um, you can find them by Googling massive nuts. <laughs> that, might, that might bring up some different kinds of websites. <laughs> Clear your browser history. <laughs> but, uh, where's my camera? 
This is this is the jig. It's basically a, a little turntable. Uh, turn nut at the bottom. That locks into the lathe. The guide block which sits there and holds it straight. And the bed across the top. Yep. And I've got a nut on here so I can fold it flat to go in the drawer. Um, and it's an old six inch ruler, which means I've got spring to it. So, very easy to make. Um, whole indexing system costs a couple of quid. Um, and it's something that's very expensive to buy if you want to go out and buy a proper indexing system. And it's so much easier to use than trying to use the spindle lock on your lace to try and figure out where your holes are. Have you got anything you've made with it, Pete? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Um, Don't ask awkward questions. <laughs> <laughs> and what's more, I've got to be honest, I've got no plans to make anything with it either. Um, but... Um, Wayne was making his potpourri pot mm -hmm. using the um, spindle lock on the back of his chuck, which um, I actually have as well, but most people don't because they don't put it on the new chucks. Um, which draws that in? It's that one. It's only 24 positions, I think, Pete, aren't they, generally? Yeah. Um, you see I've got the holes on the back of this one, which um, is my indexing point on the chuck. Um, so I actually had no need for an indexing disc, but I watched Wayne using his and making his pot pourri pot, and I thought I'll make one of those one day. And a few people oh. were asking about <coughs> indexing, so I thought I'll make an indexing first, disc first. Ooh. Ruben Woodcross just come in. Hi, Ruben. Hi, Ruben. You missed it. Over in a flash. Well, it'll Rob's save someone a... about 80 quid, Pete. It'll save someone about yeah. 80 quid that really wants one. Yeah. Rob's got a question. Rob CP, uh, he says he may have missed it, but how does the spindle not move? Okay. Um, as you can see, I've got a pin here. Yeah. And I'm going to switch to the other camera. I'm going to take you guys back off screen if you don't mind. Yep. Good. Nobody wants to see us. <laughs> so this drops into the lathe. It doesn't into the lathe now. What's going on? Let's return it that way around. This drops into the lathe. <clears throat> Got me all flustered now, Rob. Lost my plot. It's over there somewhere. And this pin goes through the disc. The pin that goes through the top of the ruler, Rob, indexes through the holes in that disc. I put my nut down somewhere. All right. Let's pretend that I'm the nut. I am. So the Disc is held on by the chuck. Piece of work's in the front of the chuck. Fellas. Hang on a sec. Right, so the chuck holds the disc in place. The pin goes through, and you can't see that because the chuck's in the way. That's why I was using a nut. Okay, you have to imagine. So you move that, put your pin back through whatever position you want, and it's locked again. Can't move. Chris Charlton says, and this is with the lathe turned off. Yes, turned lathe off, off, powered off, unplugged. You do not use a, an indexing disc with power to the lathe. Safety Especially first. if you're using a Dremel or some other power tool. If you're, if you're drilling a hole through your piece um, and you've got the drill set up here, grab me drill post, which I nicked off of Wayne, or nicked the idea off of Wayne. 
So you've got your drill set up at whatever angle you want it at. You need to power up the drill. As soon as you think power up, your hand goes to that switch. I don't know why, but it does. And you don't want to turn that on whilst that pins through that disc. It probably won't do much damage, but it will. It will damage your index and jig completely, and it could do damage to your lathe as well. Um, in reality, if this is only screwed on loosely, then it should spin the spindle anyway. But um, it's not a chance you want to take. Oh. So turn turn the mains off. Right. Do you know what I would do? Just just to be safe, do you know what I would do? I would probably use the same plug to plug my Dremel in that the lathe was plugged into. So that, that way I know that the Dremel works and the lathe doesn't. Now that's too clever for me. I couldn't do that. No, I see. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit thick, I'd have to be making sure I've done it right. Um. Yeah, at the end of the day, turn your lathe off, turn the power off to the lathe, and then you won't accidentally hit that switch. Do your indexing, drill your holes, cut your slots, whatever it is you're going to be doing, you've got your indexing set up for. And away you go. Chris Jardin says, now I need a drill holding jig thingy too. Thanks, Pete. Uh, I'm going to improve this. Um, something else that arrived today, or yesterday rather. Piece of brass. Oh. Think. I don't know if I made a video of making this or not. Um, Wayne did. No, I think Wayne's used it. I don't know if he has made a video of making it. But anyway, um, yes, I did show it in a video I made, but I don't think I actually showed me making it. But at the end of the day, what I've done is I've drilled these holes through um, two angles and I'll set um, old pen bushings in there just to give me a steel drill guide um, so that the drill doesn't mess up the wood. But That's they're cool. both both the same size, which is a pain. Oh. So what I'm going to do is replace that with brass. Um, I'm going to drill one at six mil and one at three mil. So I can use different size drill bits. Um, and if I wanted a five mil, I can make another one because they don't take long to make. The one that Wayne uses has got a, an Axminster collar on it so you can adjust the height. Um, I'm not as generous as Wayne. I don't buy stuff if I can avoid it. So I've just made mine so that that put into the middle there, tail stop rolled up, punch a hole in it, or punch a mark in it, that's my centre height, and drill through. Um, so it's permanently at the same height. Ben Jammy okay, wants to know, where did you get the multicoloured abrasive on the, of the window? Um, this um, Pronet, it's uh, one that uh, Nick, Flamin' Turner, um, he, I believe he was giving discounts on it at some point, um, promoting it with discounts. I thought I'd give it a go because it's different colours. Um, it's okay. Not bad. Um, it's not quite as good as a brunette, I've got to say. The grit does tend to come off it a little bit. Um, the glue isn't so good. But if you don't get it too hot, it's fine. Um, and it is nice having the different colours because you can instantly see what's what. Colin Izzard's just joined. Where have you been, Colin? Hi, Colin. Okay. Anybody um, else have any more questions? For the uh, giveaway, say if you're all coming back and watching the whole thing again and getting annoyed, if you all now, in the next five minutes, 
Um, bung in the comments whether you want one or not. And I will add those names to the draw. Because um, they should all be bunched together when I get to watch this tomorrow. But I, I, same as you, I cannot see it with the comments until after it's processed. And as I said, that comes with two of the little screws, um, four mil screws. Um, and one of them has got the insert to go into the wood. So you can make your own up. Chris, you can you can type it as many times as you like. You're only getting one entry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, basically, what I'm going to do is so next weekend I'll draw a name out of a hat, um, reach out to that person, um, either on YouTube comments or through Facebook if I know who you are. Um, and get your address and send it in the post to you. Simple as that. But uh, anybody else that doesn't doesn't win it, hopefully you've uh, seen enough on this to make your own. It's only really annoying having to draw 130 odd holes. But if you go to blocklayer.com, circle divider, they actually do lots of things. That a lot on there which could be useful for various projects. Worth having a look at anyway. Cool. <clears throat> cool. So has anybody put a thumbs up on this one? Mark, you've got YouTube open, haven't you? Pretty good. You've got 33 thumbs up, Pete. And I think, oh, brilliant. I'm not sure what you got up to, but I think it's been around. The 40 yeah, yeah, 40. I think it was 41 in at one point. Yeah. Cool. Grand job. Excellent. Right. Give it another couple of minutes for people to put in their into the competition and then we'll call it a night. Thank you very much for my earworms, Mark and Adam. Um I think this is your first view of StreamYard back end, isn't it, Adam? Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm impressed. It's running YouTube and the stream without a problem. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, the, notice the de delay in it between the, your stream and, and YouTube. You can add another couple that's, of seconds to that if you are... 15 seconds between, yeah. between them. So if you're actually filming yourself turning and you've got YouTube running, that's 15 seconds behind everything you do. It gets very, very confusing. Yeah, I've um, just seen you turn around. On one side and not on the other. So yeah. 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 <clears throat> Thank you all for coming in. And John, John Mooney wants to know where did Adam get his sphere jig from, please. My what jig? Sphere jig. Uh, from Paul. Ha I, I drove to Paul Howard's house, uh, got a demonstration from him in his uh, workshop, and handed over 165 pounds of my money. Same. Same one I've got. It's a brilliant jig, isn't it? Yeah. I tried making I one. The same one. I tried making one. It made oval spheres. So. Yeah. <laughs> Eggs. Eggs, basically, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one day I'm actually going to do a turning video. Um, so far, most of mine have been tool making of some sort or another. <laughs> but um, I kind of look at what everybody else is try doing and I'm trying to think of something that I haven't seen recently make it along those lines but um i mean the, the video of the bowl will be turning obviously because um that is turning but it's extreme turning it's not um it's not nice turning <laughs> it's scary turning yeah. the, outcome, the outcome is pretty awesome though pete i've got to be honest i like the look of it scale um I like the scale of it. I don't like the look of it. Um, I couldn't work those edges properly with the, the tool post that I had. But I've, I know I can borrow a floor standing if, if the place is open with COVID and all that. I can get to it and I can borrow it. A floor standing tool rest um, of the right height. It's much more solid, not vibrating all over the place. 
I can reshape that. I've got enough room. I've left myself plenty of room to, to reshape it, get it to where I want it to be. Cool. Right. I think it's uh, time to hit the button and end the broadcast. So anybody that hasn't put in yes, please, for the um, draw so far, you can always come back and put yes in the comments on YouTube. And my mouse has gone to sleep, so I can't end the broadcast. Right. That's it. Cheers, guys. See you Bye on the next one. Oh, um, Makers Live later on, isn't it? Makers International. Makers yeah, International. Half past nine. And then JP's got a premiere at 11. Caitlin the Cat, 11.15. Wayne Woodturner tomorrow at lunchtime, 1 o'clock. And myself live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with Peter's new So thank you all. Catch you on the next one.